speaker is also from MMU. It's Pura Ariza, and she's um, a UCU in the UCU trade union. So that's the union that covers um, university lecturers. And she's the quality officer at the MMU branch, and she's also on the UCU NEC. That's right. So that's right. over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me, people before profit, and I'd like to say people before profit, students before profit, and education before profit, because there is only one explanation for the appalling treatment of people like Anna and all the other students up and down the country, and that is the universities raking in their money for their own profiteering. The lack of preparation from universities for what was coming up for the term, I think, is criminally negligent. They ignored SAGE, they ignored warnings from UCU, the, um, it, the preparations which, in, which they put in place were laughably inadequate if it had been a laughing matter. Um, the buildings were not safe, the resident, halls of residence were not safe, we don't even have, fun we don't have a track and trace system, we don't even have functioning registers and staff are being told that they don't need to isolate and st when people become ill staff are not informed and students not, are not informed. I'm appalled if uh, J uh, Johnson has congratulated stu um, universities on their behaviour and I'm absolutely appalled at the way that universities have so quickly turned on students and blamed them. Just to remember what Anna has said before, those students are now locked in together, those who have COVID and those who don't, in a cruel experiment in herd immunity, which they didn't even get consent for. And you've heard horror stories about them not having food, etc., etc. But this is what you get when you turn education into a business. It's the business drive which has given rise to this and also something UCU has been campaigning for longer against the market model in education. It's really poisoned our relationship. A lot of staff talk about how it's poisoned our relationship with students. Students are presented to us as these sort of really awkward customers that we have to appease because they're so unreasonable, except now they're portrayed as being reckless and foolish and spreading the, the um, the pandemic. I think it's very clear who is being reckless and who is spreading the, the pandemic and I think that university managements have to be brought to account. One minute left for us. I'm really pleased to say that in my branch at Manchester Met we held the biggest branch meeting we've ever had. We passed a vote of no confidence in the Vice-Chancellor and we are moving towards a dispute and potentially to strike action over unsafe um, working conditions and unregulated workload. We're not the only branch that's doing it. Part, and I wanted to say also that part of the marketized model in higher education, which you may or may not be aware of, is the huge amount of casualization and the huge numbers of teaching academics who are working on precarious contracts for years and years and years on what are actually very low wages. So what do we need to do? We need these campaigns which bring together students and bring together staff, teaching staff and all university staff, and also bring together communities. We need to take put education back into um, state funding. We need to take education out of the hands of the profiteers up, who vice chancellors sit on their own pay award bodies. Education is not about customers. Nobody should, all of those students should be repaid. No students should be paying fees. Education is about society, it's about community, it's about, uh, it's about us, and we need to take it back to work for our societies and our community. And thank you very much. And please support us if we have to go on strike. We will indeed. Thank you very much, Bora. That was great. And you're getting to lots of claps there. And I just want to add what Helen Mayo, from, who's also in the same union branch as Bora, uh, our members have felt bullied into face-to-face -face teaching, even those with health conditions. People with asthma being told that they are low risk and it's fine to teach classes of 20. Members very angry with how they and their students are being treated.